Welcome to FoundersMetal.com, the place where inspirational founders share their battle stories. Welcome, I'm Patrick Atche, and this is the very first episode of FoundersMetal.com. Every Monday and Thursday, I will be sharing interviews with resilient founders who have started inspiring organizations. Each interview will capture the mindset and tools that allow these founders to start and build their organizations. Excited? Well, let me give you some more information on my interview flow and about myself. Each episode will start with a brief introduction of the selected founder. We then proceed by going back to the beginning and asking our founder what inspired them to start their journey as founders. We then move in on to asking our founder what was the greatest challenge they faced in building their organization. We drill down into the details of this incident to extract valuable learnings about what caused this challenge and how it was overcome. Then we ask our founders to describe their organization's activities today and their role, if any, in its continuing activities. Some founders have moved on and in such cases we ask how they handled succession planning. The next segment is the highlight of the interview. A semi-structured segment called The Crucible, where you put the founders on the spot and ask them two to three hard-hitting questions aimed at seeking valuable insights to what anyone who wants to create their own organization should know. We end the interview with one of two questions. Either, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self? This is a powerful way to end the interview, with nuggets of wisdom provided by the founder, applicable not only to the younger selves, but also to anyone thinking of starting something. Or, what three attributes have been and will be most important for their journey as founders. This question provides valuable insight into the attributes it takes to start and then build an organization. My inspiration. Having described the show, I think it's important for you to get some context as to why I started it. For a number of years now, I've been an avid reader and listener through Audible of self-help books. I was inspired in particular by stories of inspiring entrepreneurs and how they made it. There was something so inspiring about the stories of braving the odds and building businesses. As I moved to an outer suburb of Johannesburg, I spent more and more time in traffic and used this additional time to listen to more audiobooks rather than radio or music. I preferred listening to something focused on my interests. As well as being inspiring, it was also educational. However, audiobooks tended to be long, usually over three hours. So it took me several trips to finish one, by which time I would have often have forgotten what I'd listened to previously. I thus found myself looking for a shorter, more easily digestible format that still provided inspirational content around my passion for building organizations. This is where I discovered podcasts such as John Lee Dumas's Entrepreneur on Fire. However, I realized that the podcasts that I listened to rarely featured interviews with people I could relate to. Most interviewees were American and their stories reflected how they had made it from or in America, although many of their businesses were international in scope. I wanted to listen to success stories from people who I could relate to people who were from Africa and or had built organizations in Africa. So it was from this that Founders Metal was born. I decided to create a platform that would inspire people who were passionate about making a difference in Africa. My goal is to grow this platform into the premier source for inspirational Africa-focused business content that will inspire others in and of this continent to build and grow awesome organizations. Having described the show and the inspirations for it, I'll end by providing my background. My name is Patrick Ache, and I was born and raised in Africa. Yes. Africa is not a country, but I have lived in so many parts of this beautiful continent from Cameroon through the Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, Nigeria, Ghana, Sudan, Tanzania, Burundi, Ethiopia, South Africa, amongst others, that I consider myself an African, first and foremost. After graduating from high school at 18, I spent five years in the UK studying law at the University of Kent and then Warwick. Why law? Well, I love to argue. <laughs> I felt I could do worse than following my father's footsteps. At 23, with my two degrees, I was tired of studying, had no immediate job prospects, and was unsure of my next steps. I had a flash of inspiration that led me to China, a country whose culture that I'd always admired and with growing ties to the African continent. I spent two beautiful years in China, teaching English, studying Chinese, and doing an internship for a French oil company. I left with Chinese language proficiency and awesome memories. Now 25, I think of going to go back to the UK and get some work experience in a developed economy, I went back to visit my family, who were living in Tanzania at the time. And by good fortune, I sat and passed an interview for a position at a law firm in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania where I spent almost six years. I love Tanzania and many aspects of the job, such as working with intelligent people and arguing. 
but I preferred work that involved meeting with people than drafting endless documents sat in an office. Even then, I realized that I wanted to build something that lasted beyond me, but I wasn't sure what. In fact, at that time, I was still thinking I would open up my own law firm. At 30, I had the opportunity to work at another top African law firm in Johannesburg, South Africa. Although I learned a lot in this new role, it involved much more sitting in an office and less interpersonal and more impersonal work, advising big corporates rather than individuals. The niggling feeling that I was not making best use of my attributes erupted into full-blown conviction. What no one what best to do and how best to do it, I, at 33, took refuge in the usual skate ground for career changes, namely an MBA. Fortunately, the MBA, in addition to the usual tech courses, was also very strong on softer courses aimed at giving students tools to assess oneself. This was one of the most valuable aspects of the entire two-year program. In addition to bringing me contact with an amazing network of ambitious, intelligent, and successful people. Shortly after turning 35, an MBA in hand, I quit my law firm and founded my consultancy, focused on being a business advisor and coach to owner-managed businesses. In a few months after opening my consultancy, I realized that something was missing. My passion, in addition to advising entrepreneurs, was also to inspire them to start their entrepreneurial journey. Having been inspired by audiobooks and podcasts, I realized I could create a podcast around people who had founded organizations in Africa to inspire others to take the leap while also advising them on the transition process. To end off, I would like to thank you for joining me for this episode and hopefully many more episodes to come. I continue to be inspired by my interviewees and by you, my listeners, in your determination to make your dreams a reality. If you feel you have benefited from this future episodes, please feel free to rate and review the show. Thank you for joining us at foundersmetal.com. Gather your strength and strike while the iron's hot.